coffee going first. So, spot meters, making a light reading. Most view cameras, or all view cameras, uh, are totally manual and they don't have any light meters built in, not like our um, smaller format cameras or digital SLRs. Why is it important to use a meter? Well, you've got to calculate the exposure. And I would say using film, black and white or colour, but in particular um, large format film, you have to take an accurate light reading. And the way I choose to do it is using um, my spot meter, which is, uh, <laughs> this is my Pentax spot meter 5. I've had this since college. Amazing little meter. This is an analogue meter, so um, I'll try and show you what it looks like inside. It's a little bit tricky with the lens. but essentially you've got a scale inside and a needle and when you point the um, circle inside at the subject it gives you an exposure value numeric um, that number can then be taken onto the calculator dial and you can make an exposure with a wide open aperture or a smaller aperture so for example today we're looking at f45 at an eighth for an average sort of reading of this scene um, or if you wished you could use uh, f5.6 at a 500th your choice of the photographer um, but ultimately it's essential to make an accurate reading because the film that we shoot in these cameras is nowhere near uh, as light sensitive or as the latitude of digital sensors. Um, I love digital technology. The sensors are amazing, probably more sensitive than the human eye. Um, but also the software that manages the images is phenomenal too. I use Capture One. Um, Lightroom's amazing. Um, but you're probably getting, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 stops of latitude. That's say 14 stops from black to pure white um, and that is pretty much how the human eye sees you can see um, we stop down and see the bright sky and, and make uh, detail and also uh, in dark shadows we uh, instantly adjust and we can uh, see shadow detail but a camera lens a camera can't do that so the latitude of the film is is, is uh, critical and the black and white sh film that I shoot probably has only five stops of textural uh, uh, textural range so from um, shadow detail to highlight detail it's probably only five stops which isn't very much uh, compared to say 12 stops of a digital camera um, which is amazing um, still has to be controlled you still need a good exposure but if you go slightly wrong, maybe a stop either side, with digital anyway, I know you can save it. You could pull back the highlights or you can um, increase the shadows to some degree. But it is always better to have an accurate, good exposure on your file so that you can um, adjust um, with more control in whichever software you choose to use. So, why do I use a spot meter? Well, essentially, this is my analog Pentax spot meter 5. In the studio, I don't use this much anymore, but I used to use um, the Minolta. This is a, a, a digital light meter, and again, it works on the same principle. You have a little dot in the middle. You take a reading, and it gives a, an exposure value. This meter is great because you can do shadow details, uh, highlight details, and it will average it for you, um, which is kind of good. Um, but it also works digitally, so it's intensive stops, so it's quite accurate, uh, especially in the studio. But um, my very favourite meter really is the Pentax because it's analogue, there's a dial, I put a, a, a calculator disc, which is my own um, calculating method, which is basically uh, inherited from. Ansel Adams, the master, who, uh, if you've not heard of him, check him out, Google Ansel Adams, and if you want to understand more about exposure for digital or for film, but particularly film, 
um, read and Slatham's the negative it is the Bible on exposure and uh, managing exposure and taking light readings and uh, he discusses the um, the spot meter uh, and will describe it far better than me so I've got a scale of um, 10 stops 1 to 10 with a little bit of tape and um, I take readings quite quickly and accurately and generally I'll find uh, in any scene I'll try and pre-visualize what I want which is very important uh, is it going to be a dark image is it going to be a high key image do I want the maximum dynamic range or do I want to increase the contrast and make it very um, uh, high contrast um, these are the creative decisions a photographer has to make cut so once you've got the um, camera set up composed focused um, you've perhaps decided what aperture you want to use to control the depth of focus the depth of field so um, all these creative decisions happen usually subconsciously but um, as a photographer once again you have to make these decisions and you can't preview it you have to um, visualize it in your mind's eye so we're in the field the camera ready to go but we need to take a light reading so I'll generally go for a mid-tone value so I'll visualize and find something where I feel it falls in the middle of the exposure range and I will take a light reading and it gives me a number which I will place in this case it's EV13 and I'll place it on zone 5. Zone 5 is the centre of the universe, it's mid-grey, 18% grey. Um, I've ex I, I placed um, the mid-tone value on a mid-grey, so in a black and white print it will be, hopefully, if I process it right, a mid-grey. And then I'll very quickly look for the highlight detail, so it might be the sky, which gives me a value um, of, say, 15. And again, if I look on my scale, um, that's two stops above mid grey so I've got cloud detail coming in at zone 7 which is a highlight with textural um, luminosity it's got a textural um, value so it's not a burnt out white it has a little bit of texture which is good and let's go to a deep shadow detail somewhere down here under the camera and this little C and it goes way down to number 10 10 is zone 2 on my little scale here I haven't moved anything yet I only set the mid value so I've got from 10 to uh, 15, maybe 16 in the high, in the brightest sky. Um, so from zone 2 to zone 8, six stops of latitude. And if I was going to focus and pull everything in sharp, say use f64, I'd need a quarter of a second at f64. Uh, put my film in, set the camera lens, one quarter second f64. Uh, that's a second and we've made our exposure. Um, it probably takes far longer to explain how I use this to actually make the reading. Um, I used to make exposure notes all the time on the values I was using. Very useful to make my own little scale. Anne Sladdams discusses this in his book, making a little scale. So you can pre-visualize the tonal scale from black to white and you can place uh, a shadow detail on textural shadow or a highlight detail on highlight. Um, um, and it is really really quick I can do a meter reading usually within seconds uh, as long as I'm pretty sure on what I'm uh, kind of wanting in the picture from the start very accurate there's a circle in the center it's a one degree spot so it's actually taking a tiny little circle uh, of one degree of the subject area which I love so on a portrait you can do the shadow or you can do the highlight of the skin uh, in a landscape you can do the deepest shadow in some rock areas or trees and then you can do the height, highest bright, brightest highlights on a, a reflective surface like the sea or a lake or in the sky itself um, works amazingly well with practice must practice but yeah the Pentax spot meter one degree spot um, I love using it it's never let me down it's a pretty solid thing I've had this over 30 years and it's still going strong absolutely love it so we've made our exposure 
we calculated the uh, exposure as we wanted it. We go to the dark room or we send the film to a lab, it's processed and comes back and hopefully we've got a decent negative with good tonal scale. Um, because we're actually measuring the latitude from shadow to highlight using the one degree spot, we can, with experience, work out can the film handle that latitude, can it handle that brightness, um, do I have to increase the contrast, do I have to reduce the contrast, and the way we do that in film photography is in the processing of the film. So for instance a normal negative with normal exposure range would have a normal development time, let's just say five minutes. If I wanted to push the contrast I might go all the way up to seven, eight, maybe even ten minutes to give the negative more contrast, uh, particularly in the highlight details. Um, with black and white film in particular you always, always expose for the shadow detail. Make sure the shadow is in the negative and you process the film to control the highlight detail within one or two stops, um, which is quite a lot on film. This is really important, but again, using the spot meter and being able to assess the uh, brightness range very quickly, I can make that decision as a photographer as how I'm gonna actually process the film. So thank you very much for watching once again. Um, spot meters, digital, analog both work brilliantly I recommend you try one if you can and if you use film you must definitely try one I hope you've enjoyed watching this if you do have any questions please drop me a question below and I'll answer as best I can and um, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one cheers guys